It is now my distinct pleasure, it's my distinct pleasure to invite Mr. Jim Gallagher to provide the commencement remarks. Good morning. This is a day you will remember forever. This day will be etched in your mind. I had one of those days many years ago. That was a big memory for me as well. I was sitting at the dinner table with my father. I was a teenager. He was a 20-plus year enlisted man in the Air Force. We were talking about college, whether he should attend college. You see, he had 10 children that he needed to support. He hadn't been in school for over 20 years. And when he was in school, it was in a small country school in the state of Iowa. He was a C student. He had two and a half years of the GI Bill remaining. I was trying to convince my father that it was a very bad idea for him to go to college. He didn't listen to me. He went to UCCS. He graduated in two and a half years with almost straight A's. He was very motivated. He had passion around being a teacher someday. Obviously, he loved children. I will never forget that conversation, nor will I forget that same day when I followed in his footsteps to also graduate from UCCS several years later. I felt so, my father felt so strongly about the quality of his education here at UCCS that he promised any of his children who also attended UCCS that he would pay their tuition. Seven out of ten of us accepted his offer. After I graduated, I married my wife Janet, and we both worked at Safeway for a year following graduation to save our money so that I could attend graduate school. That was also a time when it was very difficult to find a job. I sat down with my father at that same table some years later after I had graduated from UCCS, and we were having a similar conversation. I wanted to go to law school. He thought that was a bad idea. <laughs> he said, school is expensive. There's too many lawyers already. You're doing very well working at Safeway. I think you're going to move from the produce department to be an assistant manager someday, and there's a possibility that later on you could be a store manager. I explained to him that I had a similar passion to be a lawyer, just like he wanted to be a teacher. He ultimately gave me his blessing to go to law school, but only if I promised that I would try to be the best. He said there was always room in any profession that you choose if you're the best. Can you be one of those best at whatever you choose to do after graduating from the University of Colorado at Colorado Springs? The answer is a definite yes. You have received a great education. You're going to find that you're well prepared to take on life's challenges in today's workplace. Why am I so confident of this? I look at the success of my family members who also went to college here. Like my father, several of my family members are very successful teachers. One was an army officer. Two are excellent engineers, one of which also has an MBA and a master's in environmental sciences. One is the CFO of an electronics firm. 
I went to law school and have had a career of 30 plus years in the oil and gas, refining and chemicals business. All had the tools to be successful, whether that meant going to their chosen profession immediately after college or going to graduate school. Let me take a few minutes to give you some personal advice as you begin your career. I consider these things to be key ingredients as you pursue excellence, being the best. First, work hard, never give up. You'll find that your career has ups and downs. Things don't always turn out as planned, but sometimes they turn out better than planned. Let me give you an example. In 1999, a small group of executives at Phillips Petroleum were meeting in the president's office late one night. Many oil companies like Gulf, Texaco, Unical, and Mobil were being acquired by larger, stronger companies. That night, we were deciding whether to surrender and possibly be acquired or try to save the company. Could a smaller company from Bartlesville, Oklahoma, a company that already was weakened by two prior takeover attempts, survive in this environment? We were fiercely independent and recognized that if we did not succeed, thousands of our employees' jobs would be lost and also with their homes in a small town. We developed a plan to grow aggressively, joint venture certain assets, pay down debt, and ultimately acquire a company much bigger than we were. A few short years later, after countless hours of hard work and dedication, the plan was a success. Phillips merged with Conoco to form the third largest oil company in America. We created a Fortune 5, I did not say 500, a Fortune 5 company from a small Oklahoma company that most thought had one foot in the grave. We never gave up. We developed a plan and we got it done. My second item of advice, don't limit yourself, think big. Michael Jordan once said, I never looked at the consequences of missing a big shot. When you think about the consequences, you always think of a negative result. Michael Jordan always wanted the ball at the end of the game, especially championship games, when everything was on the line. Will you be one of those who passes the ball to others? Or Will you try to put yourself in a position so that if the ball is passed to you, you can make the shot? In 2009, I left ConocoPhillips, a company I had worked for for 29 years. I had helped to build this company to a $250 billion in revenue powerhouse. At some point in my career, I had managed every asset in ConocoPhillips' portfolio. I had been a lawyer in finance, had run their chemical business, and then was CEO of their chemical joint venture with Chevron. I had run the refining and marketing group. Hopefully some of you have gone to their service stations, the Phillips 66 and Conoco brands around the West Coast, the 76 brand. And ultimately, I ran their entire worldwide oil and gas operation, exploration and production. People were absolutely shocked when I retired from ConocoPhillips to join a company in bankruptcy with over $20 billion in debt. Why would I do this? The challenge. A year later, Lion Del Vassell was out of bankruptcy. A year and a half after that, we were highly profitable. We had more cash in the bank than debt. 
a year and a half out of bankruptcy, and our stock price had climbed to new highs. Our 14,000 people rose to the challenge, and we went from a company with no future to one of the top performing companies in the chemical and refining industry on our way to becoming number one. My third item of advice to you, do it the right way. Never compromise your ethics. I'm proud that in the couple of stories that I told you about, there were no scandals or misdeeds by senior executives. Honesty and integrity were a core part of the corporate fabric of each of those companies. But ethics is not just about avoiding wrong. It's also about doing right. Lion Del Bissell has one of the best safety records in the industry. It's proved dramatically over the last couple of years. We believe that no one should ever be injured on the job, and we're getting very close to safety perfection. We have a great environmental record, and we are an EPA Energy Star partner. We have reduced environmental incidents by over 40 percent since 2009. We have cut our energy usage by 10 percent in the last five years. The plastics that we produce reduces the weight of your car substantially, vastly improving your fuel economy. That same plastic makes your car safer. Airbags, crash-resistant bumpers, non-explosive plastic fuel tanks. Many years ago, two Nobel Prize-winning scientists, Ziegler and Nada, who worked for our company, invented a key catalyst system to make modern plastics. Today, our brilliant scientists from around the globe stand on their shoulders, inventing new and improved products every day as part of the company's $140 million research program. So, whatever your chosen profession, do things ethically. But also remember, give back, be charitable, support your college after you graduate, help those less fortunate, as they say, to those to whom much is given, much is expected. Finally, my last piece of advice today, dreams never come true if you don't chase them. We have graduates from many different fields of study today. As my father told me years ago, whatever you choose to do, be the best at it. There is always room at the top in any profession. You have worked hard for this moment. Think big in the future. Don't limit yourself. Do things the right way every time. Like you, I went to UCCS, and the great education I, I received here has served me well. Most of all, remember, as a Pulitzer Prize-winning author John Updike said, dreams come true. Without that possibility, nature would not incite us to have them. Congratulations on your graduation. Give yourself a big round of applause.